Hi there, Aquarius. And so January is kind of like that beginning stages. Well, literally the beginning of the year. But also, it's setting you up for, you know, it, what you want your life to look like come the end of the year. It's setting you up professionally as well. Some major decisions that need to be made in terms of your professional outlook, in terms of which direction you want to head into professionally. And as well, how you want other people to see you and how you want other people to perceive you in the professional front. So I feel like it's a month that is loaded with work, finance, career, professional energy. And I just did the reading for Capricorn and it just seems to me like, you know, they're busy, but they're consistently working towards, you know, professional goals. Whereas for you, you're trying to design what you want your professional life to look like. And along with that, it can denote it can indicate, you know, like having to um, having to go back to the drawing board and trying to figure out how do people see us. And especially in December, I feel like there were a lot of harsh words thrown your way. And I'm also sensing like it really forced you to toughen up, to build up this wall, to build up this exterior, to not let people's words, not let their opinion, not let their energies affect you or infect your energy so I feel like you've had to toughen up and you've had to like say some pretty harsh words that are reminiscent of the truth you know it's, it's based on the truth but it, it had to be delivered in a very clear succinct way so that people understand where they stand with you okay so now moving into the month of January you are like this you're stronger wiser and smarter and you're also very, very good at learning to say no to people, learning to conserve your energy and not be around people who are problematic, who are false, who say a lot of things, but they don't mean what they say. So your energy is a lot more clear, succinct, and it's like, I know where I stand. I know uh, what I want from people and I'm not going to be, you know, shaken from this throne. It's linked up here with the Seven of Wands, and this is a card about opposition, okay? It's about fighting for our truth, fighting for the things that we believe in, and really being on the forefront to know that with this fight, we're going to lose some things. We're going to be put in a tenuous situation. We might get hurt in the process, but you're willing to believe in what you're fighting for, and that's why you're still involved in it. So I feel like this is more about, you know, what are you willing to fight for? What are you willing to, you know, put on the, um, it's like, what are you willing to wager? What are you willing to part with if you don't win this? So I feel like there's a lot at stake and you're at a point where you're contemplating, is it really worth it anymore? Is this conflict, is this battle uh, for my greater good? And am I going to lose out a lot of resources, a lot of myself as a result of, you know, continuing to fight this? So, like, what are you willing to put on the line? What are you willing to wager? What are you willing to risk? So you're going through this serious assessment, like reassessment. Is it okay for me to put down the sword and stop fighting? Will the other person attack me if I'm defenseless? Or can I, you know, just bear with it another day because they seem like they're coming at me? So I feel like you're looking at the world through like a lens of opposition. It's me against them. And there isn't a compromise that can be had with this, okay? So you're kind of like at a stalemate, constantly thinking that people are going to... Um, attack you are going to be in opposition to you so the major theme here i feel is being defensive when you might not need to be when the situation might not call for it okay and thinking like thinking that imagining that there is opposition when there is none um, so moving into 2018 in general, don't carry this energy with you. Learn to soften up, learn to open up, learn to trust people a little bit more. And not every interaction needs to be conflictual. It only needs to be that way if we're constantly trying to, you know, one up the other person or if we're constantly trying to prove how smart we are how eloquent we are how well spoken we are so not everything has to be conflictual so i feel like you're going to come into this month realizing this and as a result of it you're going to put your sword down you're going to start fighting and you're going to start working and collaborating more with other people okay 
The second cluster here, we have the death card, and this is a major transition. Things that are beyond our control, things that we don't really have any stake in anymore. So you're going to be making a major, major transition, a major shift here, walking away, moving away from a situation that made you very defensive, that made you constantly have your guard up and even I want to say trust issues for many of you guys in relationship trust issues from past relationship partner that really clouded your judgment that made you uh, constantly like weary and suspicious of your current partner you're going to be shifting away from all of these negative self-talk into a space here of higher wisdom okay the Death card and the Hermit are both major Arcana cards, and they usually denote some um, big changes happening within you. Change in consciousness is indicated with the Hermit, and the Hermit is kind of like your spirit guides, trying to guide you to a better space where you don't have to constantly doubt other people's actions, where you don't have to be on the defense and waiting for the other shoe to drop because you have trust issues. So I feel like it's really reorienting you and to make you a little bit more grounded, a little bit happier, because now you're going to be operating from this space of higher consciousness and you're not going to be constantly in you know survival mode or constantly on the defense waiting for the other person to mess up. For those of you who are in a supervisory or in a managerial position, I feel like there is an elevation, okay? This is like, we're no longer working in the battlefields. We're elevating our stands and we're going to be on top of the hill dictating and directing how other people in the trenches are going to operate. So I feel like there's a huge, huge, huge um, uptick when it comes to your professional status or your professional standing. You might get some promotions for many of you or for others. It's like you're shifting into a very prestigious position where you're kind of like the general that leads other people that tells other people what to do that tells other people where to go rather than having to get in there and get your hands dirty and you are a very very good uh, um, person when it comes to creating a strategy and creating a game plan so I feel like you have elevated yourself to this position because of all the work that you had to do in the past and I feel like it's paying off so now you're being brought into a position of higher standing and higher power where you have a lot more control over other people okay um, overall this is a really good cluster of cards it indicates to me like you know raising your consciousness raising your vibration um, it's like rising above it is what I'm hearing like no longer involved in this petty quarrel rising above it and becoming a better person as a result okay being a, a, a more insightful and a more s conscious person next up we have here the eight of cups and the queen of wands so this is a relationship cluster and what it denotes here if you are dealing with a fire sign so this is a sagittarius an aries or a leo a sun moon or rising uh, fire sign okay and uh, this is a person that is um, very, very proud. And I want to say as well, there is this energy here about this card where it's somebody who's very, um, I want to say, a little bit superficial. Okay. And this is not going to uh, apply to all of you, but I feel like this is somebody who is a little bit extravagant when it comes to their spending. They're always, you know, dressed really, really nice. Um, they can be like they they want to command attention so they want to be center stage they want to kind of hog the limelight and I feel like they're not a bad person but they can be very very stubborn fire signs in nature are, are very very stubborn but with this card it usually indicates to me someone who's a little bit territorial okay it's like what's mine is mine you cannot touch it and they can also be very good mothers and fathers, like very good parents, because they're fiercely protective of their kids. But when it comes to like, um, when it comes to like um, disciplining their children, they feel like, oh, my kids can do no wrong. So they're very, very territorial and defensive when it comes to their clan, when it comes to their children, when it comes to things that they that belong to them. So they can get uh, really competitive as well. 
I feel like there has been a long-standing relationship with this fire sign, so Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. And there were many, many years. The Eight of Cups signify a situation that we've invested a lot of time in, and it just, it's like, it, it's, it's not possible to recoup the time. It's not possible to fix things. So you don't have a choice but to emotionally kind of walk away from this person. I'm also feeling as well, some of you are in a relationship here with a fire sign. You're not physically away from them, but emotionally you have checked out. And I'm also sensing that their energy is very strong and very combative. And you feel like you might not have the right weapons to defend yourself against them. So rather than taking, you know, rather than telling them, oh, I'm done with you. I don't want to be in this relationship anymore. I'm sensing some of you are a little bit afraid to kind of walk out, walk out on them. Some of you are not in love anymore, but you're kind of afraid to take that, that big leap to walk away because you're, you're afraid of them. Okay. So this is like um, afraid of what they would do in retaliation, afraid of the wrath, afraid of the the explosive i, I want to say it's like the um, emotional turmoil that's going to be coming up if you say something that this person doesn't want to hear so i do feel a little bit of fear here one person is overpowering another person and it's really rare for me to see this in aquarius people but i do see a lot of conflicts here overall with fire signs okay for others of you i'm sensing like this could also be in a work situation where you're seeing somebody you know suffering you're seeing somebody uh feeling very dejected not being able to get what they want out of life and having to you know uh, go from one place to the next so you might be dealing with people who have very little resources you might be in a position where you're trying to decide where do i siphon the resources to who do i help first trying to triage trying to take charge of a situation and I feel like you're in a position where you have a lot of power and you have a lot of influence and you're trying to do the right thing. OK, but, you know, you, you do have a soft spot. You, you do, Aquarius, and you are easily uh, taken in by somebody who's showing a lot of distress, who's showing a lot of discomfort, who's showing a lot of um, like who's starting to show a lot of emotional turmoil. So I feel like you can be easily swayed when you're dealing with people who have very little. So I feel like you're trying to, in some capacity, in a work front, appease other people, okay, while not while maintaining kind of like that professional distance. And it's becoming very, very difficult. And so that would explain why at the beginning of this spread, you show up here as the Queen of Swords, where you're just trying to go through the day, but then towards you know the middle of the month, you start to soften up your energy. You start to be a lot more people oriented. You start to be a lot more helpful and you start to kind of like take charge of a situation because you want things to go a specific way. So there's definitely a shift in your energy where you're a lot more, I want to say sympathetic. Okay. If at the beginning it's all like uh, me versus them, I feel like there's a lot more collaboration coming through. Uh, next up, we have here the Prince of Pentacles. So this is an Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, or a Capricorn, Sun, Moon, or Rising. This is somebody who is really, 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 really slow to act, okay? Um, and I feel like for some of you, this can be like their Moon sign. Or they embody this energy and they don't even have to be an Earth sign. But here's the characteristic of this person. This is somebody who is, um, you know, they're, they're not like uh, extravagant when it comes to their spending, okay? They're not extravagant when it comes to, you know, the places that they eat, the car that they drive, the clothes that they wear, the house that they live in. They're very practical. They're very resourceful. And for many of you, this is a really handsome person that you're dealing with. So I feel like for some of you, this is a relationship partner where they care about you they like you but unless their life is sorted out unless their life is going well unless their life is smooth they're not going to be able to offer anything solid and concrete with you so it's linked up here with the four of wands and the four of wands is almost like 
um, two people sharing space together, taking the relationship to the next level, wanting to, you know, build a relationship up, moving into the same house, um, having children, getting married, all of these nice things. And so I feel like you're trying to decide, you know, why is this other person dragging their feet? Why aren't they proposing? Uh, we've been together for so long. Why aren't they making a move? And I feel like they want all of these things, but they're looking at the resources at their disposal and they're feeling as if they're not wealthy enough or they can't really afford to give you the lifestyle that you deserve or the lifestyle that you want. So you have a partner here and you need to understand where they're coming from, how much they're making and whether or not having this opulent lifestyle is going to be appropriate for the both of you. And I'm also sensing, you know, they want to build up their wealth because they want to give you more. So it's really important to be patient and it's really important to, you know, um, exercise, exercise, you know, like gratitude for what we have. OK, because where they're at, they can offer you only so much. And I feel like you want more out of the relationship. And obviously, you know, this is a stable relationship partner. They care about you. But I feel like you, you feel like the relationship might not be enough. And you feel like you want more. And you feel like the other person is holding back. And you feel all of these things. But I, I'm just sensing, you know, it's a different sign, different suit. And they're going to take their sweet time. So you have to be really patient if you're dealing with this person, okay? I feel like in terms of longevity, this can really work out. And this is not just, you know, somebody that's going to be here today, gone tomorrow. This is um, a good foundation here for a brand new relationship. And this can be a good foundation as well for... A really good stable relationship but I feel like it just needs a lot more time than you're giving it okay so don't be impatient um, in terms of right now rather than being stuck here in this uncomfortable space where you're guilt-ridden and you're constantly worrying okay additionally what I'm also feeling as well is um, I'm, I'm sensing for many of you, there is a major theme here about looking at rules and regulations with the Justice card. It's about rules of r movement, restriction when it comes to movement. Are there restrictions? Are there rules set in place to restrict your movement or to restrict other people's movement? So I feel like you're learning a lot of technical things and you're not, you're, you're kind of beating yourself up over whether or not you're able to absorb the information. So once again, it's kind of like this. A lot of information is being thrown at you. You're trying to tackle everything one by one and you're exhausted. So. Don't be so hard on yourself, Aquarius. When you're not getting something, you can get very, very riled up and you can also blame yourself for not being able to be smart enough or not being able to... You are also your worst critic, okay? So the point here is take it easy. Take care of your health and especially your emotional health. Um, rely on other people. Speak to somebody who has, you know experience if you're having trouble understanding things or absorbing the information okay um, I feel like it's gonna be very focused on foundation and career building up your new career and being seen in a, a limelight where not only are you competent but you want to be a team player as well okay so I feel like you're growing into your ability to collaborate with others to work with others to be very popular and to attract new friends and new social you know um, encounters okay um, I'm gonna leave it at that I'll be back for your um, mid-month reading the the middle of the month okay take care of yourself Aquarius and I'll talk to you soon bye bye